Hello, guys. This is Danny at Parte. So I'm uh, going to cover a couple of things with you tonight. One, we're going to talk a little bit about light. Um, and uh, then secondly, we're going to talk about surface coatings real quick on a black screen. Uh, so I just want to make you guys aware of something. Now, what I did is I went ahead and changed out the bulb that I normally keep here. And I put in 800, um, 800 lumen uh, white Kelvin bulb in here. Um so that it would give us a, a bright white sort of appearance here at the table. Now, not so much anywhere over here. Uh, this is specifically, let's just stay focused here. So you can see everything seems really, really bright. I put my hand in here. Everything's really, really bright. Uh, the bowl is, um, you know, it just if we wanted to make a game of it, it'd just say, how bright do you think the, the Lux is on these surfaces? Um, and how bright do you think the Lux is on the screen? Uh, so to preface this, that screen is a uh, flat black screen uh, that I painted for display, I think, my last upload. Um, and then what I did is I, I put together a three-part component and sprayed it as a semi-transparent surface coat that you can paint over a black screen uh, to get brightness, right, to, to make it more uh, I guess reflective or superior to to the flat black screen. So that's essentially what this panel here is, and I'm just going to do a display on it secondly. Um, but just to give you an indication, it looks really bright right here. You can tell it looks really bright on the screen. So um, I checked the Lux last night, and uh, right here was 223 Lux. That's all it was, guys. 223 lux. Now you would think maybe looking at this, maybe five, 600 lux, right? And that's how this kind of lighting, interior lighting, man made lighting, just works so much differently than the ambient light that comes in from windows. Um, it's, you can even see, I get a halo as I get towards the light. As I move down, it starts to dissipate drastically. So, yes, you get a lot of light, but that light spreads going everywhere. Uh, and the more spread out a beam is, so if this was a spotlight, it would definitely be higher lux here. But and, and it, any kind of floodlight or any kind of broad beam light, uh, the lux, as you get like a meter away, is going to be much less than it is anywhere up here. You can see in the hand, and as you bring it down, it just really drops. So just something to think about when you see um, displays, uh, demonstrations that are done in uh, supposedly bright environments, uh, especially with some of the camera play that is available to folks out there uh, with setting your ISO at different areas, um, you know, making it look like it's much, much brighter, getting that halo effect around all your lighting, around uh, even just a tabletop or something that's in the room, you can tell that it just doesn't look natural. You can see that this is bright, but the table here is very natural uh, because this is just on auto. It's capturing pretty close to what I see. It looks a little brighter as I get to the light up here than what it looks like when I'm seeing it with my eyes. Uh, but that's just because the camera picks that up even more. But if I step away, you see that dissipates, and you can still see how bright it is there in that space. All right, so that's one. So secondly, I'm going to a surface coating. So uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of go through the pros and cons of surface coating, um, you know, a screen with a semi-transparent coating. First and foremost, with a semi-transparent coating, um, in order for it to be semi-transparent and to be reflective, you're going to have to add some sort of reflective solids there. Um, there are some other ways that you can achieve uh, some, some reflectivity without using the solids, but you don't really see that um, because you can still see the bright specks, you know, whenever you get up close at times. Um, but the reflective solids... <clears throat> are basically what's going to give you all your reflectivity back. And uh, the semi-transparent uh, solution 
uh, that you're spraying on really is just a delivery agent for all those little reflective mirrors, whether it be some kind of, uh, kind of metallic flake or some sort of mica, something like that. But here's the other thing with that. Most of those items, even the flake, sometimes will have its own uh, small amount of tint that will bleed into your binder or whatever. Then most of the uh, of these coatings are going to use some sort of poly. And, you know, I consider us kind of poly experts at this point because we use it so much. But one thing we learned about poly very early on are there things that you need to know about what it does, how it behaves, or you can find yourself in a world of hurt. So we'll cover that in the cons. But real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up our display here. Now you can see it's not just standard flat black anymore okay so we've got bright whites deep blacks um, the colors not too bad able to pick on up on some subtle tones now by the way this is a 720 video I'm, I'm playing it through the Optima one, uh, HD143X, which is a 1080p projector. Um, but I am um, using a 720 video, so I'm not going to get the detail that I would out of a 1080 video or, um, or if I was using a 4K player. And there's keys with that too, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But just to give you an idea here, and I'll even very quickly give you, I know folks sometimes like to see how these things work in the dark. Also, I'm setting just about nine feet and some change from the screen. Uh, I run out of table. I don't have anywhere further to go. I try setting them up up here from time to time, uh, but they have a tendency a lot of times to fall off and I keep banging up the corners on them. So uh, we're just going to go with the fact that I've got the full image blown up, right? And I'm only trying to pick up a portion of it. Granted, it is a, a closer, so it's going to be brighter than, uh, say, well, the wall, um, and I say that, but you know, it's quite possible if I move that panel back there that it's brighter than the image that you're getting on the wall, and it's a black screen. Okay, so you look at this as a standalone, and I'll also say, you know, here's a pro. Oh, and see, there we go. Sorry, guys, I'm going to pause. All right, I've got it back up. So here's one of the pros. Besides the fact we look at it here as a standalone appears very bright, appeared very bright with the lights on. We got a full viewing cone. I unfortunately do not have a 190 degree viewing cone, but 180 or 180-ish. Um, I don't know anybody who wants to watch from this angle, but let's just say we got full viewing, right? And pretty much at the same brightness, which is going to lead me to one of the first potential cons. Now, and I say this as a con uh, because I think a lot of times these things are marketed as high gain screens and it may be the highest gain screen uh, and brightest whites that someone has achieved on a screen, uh, on a black screen. But the problem with it is, is that it's not high gain. Uh, a screen where you can see the same level of brightness from the side as you're seeing from the front. Um, and especially if that screen is a black screen, best odds, the highest that that uh, gain that that screen is going to have is about a 0.8 gain. Is that horrible? No. Um, there are times, especially if you've got a high lumen projector, 3,000, 4,000 lumens, um, that you can use a black screen of this nature and it will look stellar for you if you're into the black screen scenario. Um, it really will. Uh, but you know, if you're looking for something that's going to give you a high gain and I'll, I'll show you something in a second, um, then, you know, you sort of have to kind of look beyond this and, um, realize that maybe point eight ain't where you want to be. Uh, it's a good place to start. I wouldn't say it isn't. Um, but it's also very easy, uh, to achieve this kind of scenario. Uh, and I'm going to turn the lights back on. It's not difficult to achieve this with a surface coating. Um, 
But, and here's another con. Um, another con is that if you just use like a poly as an agent, uh, poly, even though it's uh, water-based poly, say, uh, even though it's acrylic-based, just like acrylic, as you tend to think about it, um, the poly will become rigid if it doesn't have something in there to keep it pliable. So what you're going to risk is, especially if you put this on PVC or something soft, any kind of material, when you go to stretch it over a frame, you're going to get these orbital fractures or linear fractures, and usually they occur in two different places. The orbitals are going to be where you grabbed it with your fingers and were trying to pull it. Um, and what happens, you start to get these spirals around there. It's a crack in a spiral sort of um, orientation. And then where it meets the screen and you've got corners on your screen, a lot of times at the frame, excuse me, um, it'll start to get small fractures along there. Uh, it won't really hurt the image, but over time it can start to, to peel back and crack. Uh, and that's because you really need to, uh, you need to know how to work with polys to get them to the right uh, consistency right concentration of ingredients so that you can avoid that. Uh, you can see I've dropped and banged mine. Now there's some breaks in there where it's actually just like tore a piece off. Um, but that's really from the old stuff that was sprayed on it before uh, that didn't have this treatment. And that's, you know, why we use these test panels, because I'm not going to go to market with something that I don't feel comfortable. If I sell it to you, it's going to start cracking down the line. Right. I mean, that's that would be a uh, big no, no, uh, at least from our part. So, OK, here real quick, I'm going to show you you've seen this. But let me do something here. I'm going to grab this one. So we'll grab this panel and we're going to stick it on the other side. All right. So let's talk about the art of the possible. Hold on just a second. All right, so this is Diamante. This is the panel I was just showing you. And, you know, remember as a standalone panel, it looked pretty amazing. But that's the difference in what's possible with a black screen. And what you're going to get in just some sort of typical surface spray. Now, I only did two passes on this. Um, had I done more passes, I can make it brighter. Because the more passes you make, you're spraying those little reflective components in there and they're landing, they're facing all kinds of different directions, right? So usually one spray doesn't quite get it bright enough. You need to lay, overlay another, another spray so you add more of those little, um, you know, stone or uh, metallic uh, uh, mirrors. Just think of them as just micro mirrors. Um, you're laying those down and you're getting more and more brightness as you continue to add them. The problem with that is whenever you get so much of that going on and they're all facing different directions, um, they don't line up well. Uh, you know, it's not like you're putting electricity through a crystal, so you don't get all those molecules <laughs> lining up. Um, but in this, what happens is that you get just uh, a lot of light going different directions, so you'll get these bright globs. So if you've got a color piece that's really, you know, saturated in color, it's going to be so oversaturated that you just get like a bright blob of light. There's not going to be um, the detail that you're looking for whenever you're looking at an image. But you can see, you know, that there's just a, a big difference in what you can do what you can achieve, and getting brightness without losing your contrast, right? You want to keep those deep blacks. You want everything to be crisp and vibrant. Uh, and a surface spray just isn't going to get you there because, you know, same thing. You do a couple of coats and you can get a really nice reflective image, uh, but it's not going to be, you know, at the gain level that you're trying to get 
Um, you know, we've even tried this back in the day with gloss and it still doesn't get there. As a matter of fact, it just wants to spot. It'll look dim all around the bright spot, but you just get a bright spot in the center. So, you know, we've tried every kind of angle over the course of our time with this kind of stuff. Uh, surface sprays was something we were doing a few months ago. And I'm not saying that, oh, we've already done it. What I'm saying is we've learned, um, you know, through trial and error, um, that that's not the optimal way to go. Yeah, I mean, you know, on a, on a dime, which I'll be honest with you, by the time you buy the components to make this, you're basically buying some water-based poly, buying a thing of mica. Um, and then if you want to balance it, you're going to figure out, you're going to have to figure out some way to balance it because the poly, even if you go with a matte poly, still going to have uh, sort of a sheen to it. So that can be problematic too. But just food for thought, guys. Um, I'm working on Vega. That is a version right there, and it did not work. Um, <clears throat> I uh, messed up because I tried to take a couple of uh, shortcuts. And uh, actually, I tried to make one shortcut by doubling down on one one layer um, just to see if it was something where we could, you know, get more efficient in how we would create it. And it, it just didn't work. So <laughs> uh, tomorrow, it's start back from scratch. But once again, so you can see the difference, there's Diamante Black uh, with a surface spray. Uh, and be careful of that lighting stuff too, guys. All right, you guys have a good night. Take care.